Hello, I'm John Grom, and welcome to our 79th Right and Left Discussion Forum. We hold our discussion panels twice monthly to demonstrate that open-minded civil discussion on potentially contentious topics can lead to a better understanding of the issues of the day. Today, our panel will discuss government regulation of payday lenders. Our today's panel, beginning on my left, is Dr. Ronald Chamberlain, retired re senior research chemist. On his left is Brian Lawbaugh, president of R&D Financial Services. On his left is Patty Haskins, retired math teacher and member of the Wadsworth City Council. Ron, the so-called payday lenders who make short-term short loans at high interest rates to some of the most vulner vulnerable among us have a reputation for charging excessive interest rates and using abusive tactics for collection. Do you think government regulators should protect the public from these companies, or do the built-in free market forces provide enough protection? John, I'll go back to you in a minute about what you mean by built-in free market forces, whether they protect anybody. But I, my intelligent... We, we, can, we can argue about that oh, some, some other time. <laughs> well, I don't know. I think it's relevant here. My uh, intelligent, well-educated wife asked me when I told her we are going to talk about payday lenders, she said, what's a payday lender? So I think maybe your, your explanation is pretty good. And I, I wrote up another one here. Uh, a payday loan is a type of short-term borrowing where an individual borrows a small amount at a very high rate of interest, up to 900% in some cases. Yeah. The borrower typically writes a post-dated personal check in the amount they wish to borrow, plus a fee, in exchange for cash. The lender holds onto the check and cashes it on the agreed-upon date, usually the borrower's next payday. Loans are called cash advance loans. Or Mm -hmm. uh, payroll loans. So part of the problem with that is that people can get caught up into a, a cycle here. And uh, typically, uh, so a statistic I saw from the Pew Charitable Trust is the typical payday person who takes a payday loan earns about $30,000 a year on an average. So it's quite possible that you run a little short of cash this week, you get the loan, the loan comes due, you either pay it or you don't. Some of them have rollover options where you continue, like a credit card loan, where you keep paying off. Folks uh, in this situation may not be eligible for credit cards. They do have to have a bank account. The Pew Charitable Trust is, uh, has a, a, an arm that's been looking into this, and I read out some of their, their information. Uh, the Consumer Protection Bureau has come, come out with, and there is going to be some government regulation on this soon. Uh, <clears throat> not all states have these, uh, these, these episodes. You, you kindly pointed out with some, some research about how uh, uh, Ohio has a minimum of 31 days on the loan, uh, capped at, uh, at uh, $500, 28%. Uh, yes, uh, Which is not so bad, and it's a kind of along the line of this. Now, Pew Charitable Trust feels that, and they didn't feel that the government re regulation went quite far enough, and I don't know what's recently been addressed, but that it ought to be <clears throat> installment loans. Mm -hmm. It ought to be uh, over a longer period of time, several months, and capped at a certain percentage of a person's income, small, 5 to 10 percent, not 25 percent the way Ohio has it. Now, should government regulation take care of this? Yes, it certainly should. Uh, all states have different regulations. Some prohibit it. The regulations wouldn't uh, prevent someone, <laughs> wouldn't say, oh, you prohibit this, now you have to allow it. But it seems to me that there's, now, as a liberal, the idea that market forces, <coughs> meaning, okay, let's allow the high cost of, uh, if this is what it means, let's allow the high cost of a payday loan to deter people from using it, probably isn't going to work. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and indeed, protecting, as you say, the most vulnerable of our population, I think is, <clears throat> to some extent, as a liberal, that that's a, a valid role of government. Mm -hmm. So to make some uniformity in this. Now, uh, Pew Charitable Trust thinks that uh, banks ought to get into this. People are already customers. Banks have a large pool of money that they could lend mm -hmm. out at lower interest rates and make it a little bit less usurious on people than to payday lenders. Mm -hmm. uh, it harkens back to uh, a long time ago, and you, you, you may remember this guy, Jack Olmsted. Oh, yes, I do. Jack, uh, we were in a Sunday school discussion. I was attempting to lead a discussion of a Paul Tillich book, and he derailed it completely. He says, you know, 
business these days, and uh, the free enterprise system is based solely on greed. Mm -hmm. And he went on with this at great <laughs> length. We, uh, we had an interesting discussion on that that evening. Uh, didn't have anything to do with Paul Tillich, but that's fine. <laughs> <coughs> but uh, Jack's contention was that, and this is a case, I think, where free market, meaning if the, let the payday lenders take care of it, is probably a case where greed is very rampant because of the excesses that are known to occur in the payday lenders. So, Greed is a word that people use when they don't like somebody else's self-interest. Mm, could be. But anyway, that's <laughs> a, what, no, when I'm talking about the uh, free market forces, I'm talking about reading a contract very, very carefully and deciding I don't like the terms and conditions of this contract, I, I, I reject it and go someplace else. Uh, but I think that, well, I, we'll get into it a little bit later, but that's, that's my view of okay. market forces. You decide. I can accept that. You, it's a little, you, you it's a little bit more compassionate than that. <laughs> 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 Brian, being a, I, I'm dying to find out what you have to say as a financial manager. Well, um, I agree with everything that's been said. I think that there's some predator lending that's happening. These people are vulnerable <laughs> people. They're usually financially illiterate. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't understand uh, interest rates, they don't understand compound interest, they don't understand a lot of the basics about borrowing money. They find themselves in a very vicious downward uh, spiral when it comes to these types of loans. They find themselves short uh, at the end of the month to pay the rent. They go to a payday lender, uh, which I consider more of a loan shark, um, and they, uh, they find a very short-term fix for their long-term problem. Um, I think banks could probably do a much better job. Um, you know, I've seen over the years, you know, people that when they really need a loan, they can't get a loan. Hmm. And then you have people that don't need a loan, and they can get all the money they want from the bank. Mm -hmm. You find that with businesses that are successful. You know, maybe you have a business that goes through a tough, a tough time, uh, and they need to get a loan. The bank, you know, shuts down their credit lines. Uh, the credit committee decides they're no longer uh, you know, worthy of the bank's uh, credit, and, uh, and, and it puts them into a very tight spot. Um, and then you have businesses that are very successful and the banks are tripping over themselves to lend them money. Um, so yeah, I think the government needs to do a much better job of, uh, number one, regulating these, uh, uh, these payday lenders, um, loan sharks as far as I'm concerned, and they need to do a much better job of providing financial literacy I was uh, involved in Project uh, Business, which is a junior achievement mm -hmm. uh, program mm -hmm. over the years. Mm -hmm. I was surprised at how many of our young people, they don't even understand yeah. what a checkbook is. They don't understand credit. Uh, we have kids that are in college that are graduating with uh, serious loads of student loan debt. And there's probably some, uh, some controversial things that we can talk about as far as how to mitigate that. Uh, Credit cards come in the mail. Uh, all my kids, when they graduated from college, and while they were in college, they'd get credit cards, solicitations every week. Uh, and to a kid that, uh, you know, $5,000 worth of credit on a credit card, that's, uh, that's pretty <laughs> enticing, you know, yeah. because- you, How can I be out of money <laughs> checks in my checkbook? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, and, and you look at, you know, all of a sudden, you start uh, tacking on late fees, and. Uh, it, it's it's just it needs it needs mm -hmm. the attention uh, of, of some regulation. I, I operate in a very regulated uh, environment uh, with my uh, um, investment advisor, uh, and you know I don't see an issue with going in and setting some standards, uh, getting these people help uh, if they're continually going to a loan shark or a payday lender mm -hmm. uh, on a regular basis. They obviously need some help. Yeah. Uh, and I think the banks and the financial institutions could provide yeah. that. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of money floating around out there now in, in, the, in the credit markets, mm -hmm. um, and uh, there's no reason why the banks uh, couldn't do a better job of educating people and providing that short-term installment loan that gets them over the hump. You know, uh, let's say you have two people that are working, uh, mom finds herself um, you know, ill, can't work for a couple weeks, they fall behind, and then mm -hmm. that's when that cycle starts. Yeah. So there needs to be uh, a, a sort of a multifaceted approach to this yeah. because uh, they get addicted. People yeah. get addicted to these payday loans. Um, another area that I think uh, you might wanna talk about is some of these places that rent to own. Uh, furniture, TVs, 
Um, I, I don't want to, you know, sort of paint with a broad brush. Some of them do, of, you know, they're helping people establish credit. Yeah. Uh, but when you start putting the numbers down as far mm -hmm. as what that person is going to pay for that TV yeah. or that couch mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, whatever they're renting them, it, it can be pretty onerous. Mm -hmm. So I, I think something needs to be done to, mm -hmm. to, uh, to help those people. I was going to ask you a specific question, but I'll let you speak first. Patty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Ron is right. Ohio has set up, you know, a, you know, we had a vote on this not too many years ago where, you know, it's $500 limited, 31 days, capped at 28% interest, and the federal government has set up rulings where they've made some caps, they've done things like say you can't do this more than six times. Mm -hmm. So to prevent people from going back constantly and because they, what they do is they turn over the loan. They don't pay it back in two weeks and then they turn it over and that's how the interest rates end up getting so high. Unfortunately with <clears throat> all of these, there's too many ways around the regulations. They haven't been written that well. And, you know, particularly the, the Ohio law, uh, from what I found out, and Brian, you would know more about this than I, but what they're saying that some of the payday loan companies are doing is they are registering as mortgage lenders. And then they're capped at 25%. But what they can do then, they establish a payday loan broker, which is like a credit service organization. And while they can only charge 25% interest, they can add a prepaid finance charge or a fee. A finder's fee. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then they end up getting all of this extra money in. Because it's not regulated. The it's finder's fee not is not regulated. regulated. Yeah. So it's all perfectly legal. And I, I guess the the warning to the consumer is to watch what you sign and make sure you go to one that's not doing this, mm -hmm. that's doing it on a traditional basis. Now, I mean, and obviously, you know, as Brian said, there are cases where someone might have an immediate uh, medical expense, which they can't handle and just have to wait for their next paycheck to come in some unexpected cost, whether it be a car wreck or, an, you know, an illness in the family. but. Perhaps there are other ways. It's been suggested, and some employers set up a loan service, and they're actually regulated. They can only charge 8% interest <clears throat> if on the loan, and it's loan based upon what their future income will be. Hmm. And then for the next 12 months, that employer deducts the loan money back out of their paycheck. But this is done at an 8% interest. I mean, there are other ways to get around these, though. I mean, there are, uh, New York has some of the toughest um, payday loan rules, uh, but people are getting around it by setting them up on Indian land or by operating it um, over the Internet. Um, Incidentally, the FTC has cracked down on some on the one setting up on Indian lands. And, and uh, it's, it's hard to bring a suit, but, but the FTC is working on some of that and, and has uh, carried out a number of successful cases against people yeah. doing that sort of thing. You know, but you have states like Missouri and Wisconsin that have no re regulations on it and they say there's more payday loan companies operating than there are Starbucks and McDonald's yeah. added together. You know, mm -hmm. I guess, you know, what you have to look at is how much regulation do we want the government to have to protect us from ourselves? So mm -hmm. now I'll take your direct question. You already answered it. Thank I you did. very much. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, to, to your point about the number of payday lenders, there are 23,000 in the United States. That's roughly double the McDonald's. Um, I, I, and th this Amazing. seems to be a recent phenomenon. I, uh, well, it's I, a great, sure it's a great business to be in because yeah. you're borrowing, <clears throat> you know, I mean, it's, a, it's the basically uh, based on the bank model, the bank goes out and borrows money at the Fed funds rate, which is in, in the basement right now. Yeah. They turn around and lend it on credit cards, uh, <clears throat> on mortgages. You know, they set their money out there, mortgage rates, you know, what are the three and a half, uh, four percent. And when you can make that type of money and you have such a low cost to do it, mm -hmm. and then the fees that go on top of it, um, y you know, uh, it's it sort of been one of those. Uh, credit cycles where the government has force-fed the economy 
lots of credit. You know, they've pumped a lot mm -hmm. of money, a lot of liquidity <clears throat> in the economy. So it's, it's a great business to be in because when you can borrow money at one or two percent and lend it out and, and have your credit profile of these people, you know, you have to make a, a adjustments for people that are going to default and all that kind of stuff, and you can charge them 28 uh, percent. You do the math. It's, it's a healthy profit. And, and that's where I, I think everybody has to come together and, and actually solve the problem. We have to help these people mm -hmm. get out of that vicious cycle of having to go, you know, every other month um, and, uh, you know, borrow money from these people. Patty pointed out that there are a lot of regulations out there that are not very effective. Uh, and that uh, the thing that surprises me uh, is how many payday lenders actually charge an interest rate that is not in the contract. They will overcharge, uh, not, not just through the uh, finder's fee thing, uh -huh. but other times they'll have whatever the rate is and then they'll just add on to it. And people That's just a don't I mean, isn't that already illegal? D mm -hmm. People just don't notice it or... Uh, well, like Ron said, that there, there's, no, I, I guess it was Brian that indicated there's just a lot of financial illiteracy out there, <coughs> and they just did not recognize what they were uh, uh, being charged. Uh, the, uh, there's another scam that uh, they get away with that I, I'm, I'm certain is illegal. They'll buy personal financial information from a third party. Right. Uh, right. right and then they will go ahead and, and um, put money into that person's account and then begin withdrawing it at a high rate of interest and the person doesn't even know they have a loan. Mm -hmm. But uh, apparently they keep paying it anyway. They think that they do. Mm -hmm. And they keep paying and paying and uh, now their money's gone and some guy named, oh, uh, excuse me, that's yeah. a slur. Well, you see, it, you see it on TV. You see the advertisements. Uh, I think it was Montel Williams was um, a spokesperson for some right. uh, one, of them. Yeah. one of these outfits where uh -huh. you call them up and within two days they'll deposit $1,000 into your account. Yeah. It sounds great. You know, if you have, you know, they'll show pictures of the mom struggling to make her bills. If you have a medical bill, car breaks down, call us. We can have $500 deposited into but. <laughs> I've you know, often wondered the fine that, print. <laughs> but, but you're my, giving my, up your firstborn child <laughs> plus 28 percent plus fees if you're late, and it, it really <coughs> racks up. And what, that, that's what, where you can never get ahead. It's an avalanche. I was surprised that Montel so. Williams would be the spokesman for that company. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, you know, there's there's also questions about their collection tactics, and yeah. I haven't been able to find out what they are that are so <laughs> um, awful. But I've heard that, and that's one of the things the Ohio law was trying to address was their methods of collection. Uh, does anybody know anything about that or what they do that is particularly nasty? Yeah. It's, a, it's a big business. Uh, my brother is uh, with the company uh, that does robocalls. They sell, they have, a, they have a software package and everything. A company that uses uh, a lot of uh, those types of sterling, sterling jewelers over here in Fairlawn. They have yeah. a, most of those buildings are filled with people that are making calls to collect uh, on the jewelry. You know, they, person buys a watch or a piece of jewelry, they put down so much and they make a payment each and every month when they're late. And uh, they default know, they, on it. And they yeah. start to, you know, so they, they spend a lot of money collecting. And uh, <sighs> the, uh, some of the rules that have come out recently is, uh, you know, calling cell phones. Uh, you can't call past nine o'clock at night. Um, you know, if a person says uh, something to the effect of, please don't call me on this number, don't call me at work, they have to, uh, uh, accept that answer and they have to abide by that because when they start hounding you they call you at work they call your employer uh, they call your last known address it's just it's just crazy so um, and, and I want to I want to make sure people understand my brother's not involved in the debt collection business uh, it's those robocalls that you get during the political season that he does yes. really. yeah. <laughs> Everybody. but uh, so yeah there are rules out there but it's very hard I don't know if, you, if your phone my phone rings off the hook my, my landline at home uh, for solicitation, uh, political calls, uh, it's, just, it's just crazy. But when you owe somebody money, um, they're, they're coming after you. <laughs> so, so. For several, uh, several months now, we've just monitored all our calls. Right, yeah, we don't answer. <laughs> don't answer yeah. the phone, and, yeah. and uh, I'll listen and see what it is. Uh, a good part of the time, because we've got the answering machine, the robot picks yeah. up on that and yeah. just stops. Exactly. So. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty smart algorithms. So. Well, with the uh, all the 
the um, <coughs> abuses of payday lending that are going on, what kind of regulation do you think governments should uh, install? Something that would work. I mean, 27, or excuse me, only 27 states allow mm -hmm. payday lending. 17 of them forbid it completely, completely and others right. have some kind of <coughs> hybrid. Uh, but do you think that um, just uh, outlawing them completely uh, would? No, I don't think so. I think, uh, again, I think uh, installment loan over mm -hmm. a longer period of time uh, be pretty restrictive <laughs> on the amount. Uh, You're talking about through a regular bank. I'm talking about, well, either through a regular bank or through the, through the payday lenders. The now, the payday lenders bank. object to the bank, to the government, because they say, well, they'll put us out of business. Sure. But uh, that's not go really going to be true if you write the regulations right. But they do will have to adhere to a pretty rigid <laughs> standard of protection of people. You know, cut back on your profit a little bit. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> what the Bible says something the about loopholes. usury. I think I think one of the issues is we have to be able to start to educate our uh, well, public that's true too. because we have people that are like you know credit crackheads. They get a credit card, they max that thing out. They get another credit card. They think they're doing themselves a favor by rolling over their balance to another credit card that has a lower interest rate. And, and then they jack it way up. And then, and then exactly, they jack it way up. and Then you go um, to another credit card. Then you go to another credit card. I mean, that, that's just, it's just crazy. Yeah. So yeah. part of it has to be education. I think the government has to step in and say, you know, there, here are some, some fundamental guidelines that you have to follow if you're gonna be a, a payday lender. Mm -hmm. um, and it could include, you know, lowering the interest rate a yeah. little bit. I think if banks got involved, a little more competition. Yeah. We're gonna talk yeah. about free yeah. market. Yeah. A little more competition will start driving down that rate because mm -hmm. the bank can borrow money cheaper. You know, the mm -hmm. Fed is uh, willing to give them, I think the Fed funds rate is, you know, what is it, um, 2 point, uh, what is it, point zero two eight or something? It's crazy. It's, it's like in the basement. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty much free money. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I think that they're, they need to do something about it. Um, you know, you mentioned credit cards, and that's a racket almost in, <laughs> in and of itself. I mean, my daughter, when she was in high school, under 18, like at 16, started getting credit card offers in mm -hmm. the mail. And she could have sent this in. Mm -hmm. you know, and I would get calls for her to get a credit card. And mm -hmm. Do you realize you're talking to a 16-year-old? What I should have done is let them get, send it to her. And I, I might be wrong on this, but I think at 16, they couldn't have held her to it because mm -hmm. she couldn't sign a contract. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. You know, the way they do that, you know, when I look at you know, the payday loan places, you know, I mentioned the fact we're protecting, government protect us from ourselves. People go there not just because they need money, but they've also, they've used, they've got their credit cards maxed out. Mm -hmm. If their credit card wasn't maxed out, they could go to the bank and get money mm -hmm. off of that right away. So you're talking about people that are going there that are ready right. in serious debt. Yeah. And then they're promising their yeah. firstborn child to the payday right. loan company. <clears throat> and They're not a good credit risk. I mean, their credit yeah. scores are in the basement. And, and, uh, which yeah. is why the payday yeah. loan operates as it yeah. does, to make yeah. sure they get their money back. Mm -hmm. But like you said, people need to be better educated mm -hmm. about how to handle their finances. Yeah. When I read about one of the biggest abuses, and that's buying people's financial information from a third party, mm -hmm. and then being able to get into their bank account, and That's put scary. put money there, and then start withdrawing it, and the people have never um, uh, entered into an agreement with the company. But isn't that already illegal? I would think. I, I, it's I mean, gotta be. Yeah. What are think. the what Brian? What are the laws regarding people's financial information? Well, uh, in my industry, it's very very stiff. Uh, privacy notices. Uh, we guard the public with that information. Uh, we have a variety of um, encryption that we have to use, we're required to have. We don't send any of that information in any emails. Uh, I think you'll notice on your statements now, the last four digits of your credit card number, they no longer put that all out there. You no longer put a social security out there. Uh, we have right. various um, methods to verify who we're talking to on the phone. Um, so yeah, we, we do our best to protect that. And when there is a, a, a breach, uh, you're, I mean, you're required to contact everybody. <clears throat> uh, uh, my yeah, yeah. first marriage just had a breach. Um, uh, we got a, uh, a letter for my sons. They had identified a breach on the de some of their debit cards. They automatically send out new ones. They close the old one down. 
Yeah. Uh, so I think they're doing a lot better job, but the crooks are, are just as smart. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's crazy how smart they are and, and what they're doing to siphon off billions of dollars <clears throat> from unsuspecting people. So, uh, you know, uh, they're doing a much better job, and there are regulations mm -hmm. out there when it comes to protecting mm -hmm. individuals' uh, financial information. Yeah. And, There's um, another interesting scam, too, that's, that's, that's gone on. Uh, <clears throat> you, have the, you have the loan, and they're into your bank account. They can add on and, and en enroll you in other services that you don't know about, yeah. mm -hmm. and then that gets deducted, mm -hmm. whatever it's a monthly yeah. fee or what yeah. have you, you know. And yeah. uh, I've had a couple of those on credit yeah. cards. You oh, yeah. Look, yeah. look at the state yeah. and say, what is this thing? You know? Right, right. It's uh. that negative response. If you don't yeah. check the box. Yeah. 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 If you don't yeah. check the box, you're going to get it. You're going to get it. Or you get a free subscription yeah. to a magazine. But right. if you don't, <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Getting back to the original question about whether or not free market forces are enough to protect people from things like this, do we all agree no? No. Not in this instance. They're not powerful enough? No. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, I, th I think that the problem is just too darn complicated uh, for, to expect the general public to be able to understand all the pitfalls that they're getting into, even if they do read the contract. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a finance major and these things confuse me. Mm -hmm. you know, I, uh, no. uh, the, uh, w uh, they're, they're controlled by, uh, are regulated by uh, both state and federal government. Right. Uh, and uh, it uh, makes me wonder, does every state have the right to ban payday lenders if they want to? I think I so. I would say, I think yeah. so. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Interesting conversation. I got a quote, not, you know, I, I remembered to get a quote this week from uh, Ralph Stockman. I, I don't know who Ralph Stockman mm, no is, idea. or David Stockman. But, uh, let's not bankrupt our todays by paying interest on our regrets of yesterday and by borrowing in advance the troubles of tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much.